Now, Ensemble is another genome browser. Um, it is based at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory. A lot of this work that is done is based at the EBI, the European Bioinformatics Institute. And so you're going to be able to find, you know, if you need to learn how to use the Ensemble Genome Browser, uh, there's a bunch of tutorials that you can use. Um, you can also look at a YouTube video, and I will create a mashup of the YouTube video and make that available also. Welcome to the Ensemble Genome Browser. The Ensemble project focuses on chordates and includes the genomes of over 50 species, including human, mouse, rat, and zebrafish, our most popular species. More than half of our chordate set are mammals. The non-chordate genomes, yeast, C. elegans, and fruit fly are also included and aid in more accurate phylogenetic gene trees. Ensemble analysis is now extended to bacteria, plants, protists, and fungi. See our sister project, Ensemble Genomes, for more. What are Ensemble genes? In the gene build, see DNA and protein sequences from sources such as NCBI reference sequence set and Uniprot are aligned to the genome. From these alignments, transcripts are clustered together based on overlapping coding sequence to form Ensemble genes. This is the automatic annotation pipeline. For some species, such as human, Ensemble includes manually curated transcripts from the Vega Havana project at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. Ensemble provides gene sets for even newly sequenced, low-coverage genomes such as cat, elephant, and dolphin. Other annotation includes variation mapping, comparative genomic studies, and functional genomics. Let's see how the browser arranges this information. Start at the Ensemble main page. Every two months, the browser and underlying databases are updated. The news announces new species, gene sets, and any updates or changes in annotations such as variation mapping. The Pre tab allows you to browse new genomic assemblies that have not yet been fully annotated. BLAST is available on both our main site and the Pre site. An archive link is present at the bottom of every page. This allows older versions of Ensemble to be accessed. At the top, find links to documentation and frequently asked questions. Contact our help desk with any questions or comments using the link shown here. Help desk messages are replied to within 48 hours, so please make use of this resource. Let's go back to the main page. We could search for a gene by ID or name, a chromosomal region, a probe set, or even a disease. In this particular example, we will search for a human gene with the HGNC identifier, the assigned human gene name from the Hugo Gene Nomenclature Committee, CDKN2B, and we will use it as an example to navigate through the pages of Ensemble. We could search directly from this main page by typing in human CDKN2B gene, or simply just CDKN2B. However, let's click on Homo sapiens to move to the species-specific homepage for human. Here we find information about the assembly used and any alternate sequences for haplotypic regions. For example, for human, nine alternate assemblies are included. Links on the left-hand side show statistics and dates for the gene build. We can also reach the karyotype. Now we will search for a gene by typing CDKN2B gene at the top of the page and clicking Go. Let's expand Homo sapiens and gene. Click on this first hit to go to the gene summary page for CDKN2B. The Ensemble Gene Identifier for this gene is ENSG 5014783. This identifier is stable, meaning even if the gene is updated, the ID should remain the same. Other stable IDs in Ensemble include ENST for transcript, ENSP for protein, ENSE for exon, ENSR for regulatory feature, and ENSFM for protein families. The Ensemble views are separated into tabs. We are in the Gene tab. Links at the left show specific information for the CDKN2B gene.
for example, genomic sequence, sequence alignments, a gene tree, homology relationships, and variations. Back in the gene summary page, we can see that two transcripts have been annotated. These transcripts are both members of the CCDS set, a consensus set of coding sequences established as a collaborative effort between NCBI, Ensemble, Vega, Uniprot, Swissprot, Swiss Pro, and UCSC. Further down, we see the transcript models. The contig reflecting the genomic sequence is displayed as a blue bar. Transcripts above the contig are on the forward strand. If they are drawn underneath the contig, then they are on the reverse strand. Boxes are exons and lines connecting those boxes are the introns. Boxes are filled if they contain coding sequence. Unfilled boxes represent UTRs or untranslated regions. The two transcripts for the CDK and 2B gene show coding sequence and are on the reverse strand of the genome, underneath the blue bar. Both are described as being ensemble Havana merges. This means the same transcript was found by the Ensemble Automatic Annotation Pipeline as the manual curation by the Havana project. Ensemble Havana merges are colored in gold. Let's choose one of the transcripts to explore further. We could either click on one of the transcript IDs from the table, or click on a transcript diagram and follow the link to the ENST identifier. I'll choose the longer transcript. We are now in the transcript tab. At the left, links to the supporting evidence, sequences on which this transcript was based, sequence displays, introns and exons, cDNA sequence, and protein sequence are available. Other links include general identifiers. Here we see matches to the ensemble gene or protein sequence in other databases, such as Uniprot. We have matches to oligoprobes, and gene ontology terms, which provide functional classes assigned to the protein, or regions in the cell. You can even find different protein domains mapped to the amino acid sequence. Okay, we've looked at a gene and even one transcript. Let's look at a larger region of the genome. Click the Location tab to go to the Region in Detail page. The CDKN2B gene is highlighted. Neighboring genes are shown along the chromosome. Contigs are shaded in light or dark blue to show where they are in the genomic sequence. You can click on a gene or click and drag your mouse to form a small box to recenter the display. Scrolling down, the CCDS track is shown with aligning regions in dark green. Configure this page allows many more tracks to be drawn. Active tracks are shown here. These are ones already selected. Information for these tracks will be displayed if there is data for those tracks in this region. Let's choose to see variations. I'll search for it here, or browse the menus for tracks. Select Sequence Variants All Sources. Let's also add Uniprot alignments. Click Show Information to learn more about this source. Save and close the menu. The page should reload. You might see that a protein from Uniprot aligns to the region of the genome. Variations are shown as vertical lines along the genome. Triangles indicate insertion deletion mutations. Click on the pink frame shift coding variation. A variation box should appear. This insertion deletion mutation has an RSID from NCBI dbSNP. This type of box appears when you click a variation from other pages as well. Let's follow the link to variation properties. A fourth tab has now opened. Explore the links at the left to see more information about this variation, such as population studies or disease association, or follow the link to NCBI dbSNP to view the original submission. The fifth tab in Ensemble is the Regulation tab. To find it, click the Gene tab and then Regulation. Here we have information from the regulatory build. 
These ENSR IDs represent sequences associated with open chromatin based on DNase-1 hypersensitive sites and CTCF binding sites. Click on one to open the regulation tab. Help is available from most ensemble pages. Click on the help for more information about these features. In the help window, we find a link to the documentation. There are also links to frequently asked questions, the video tutorials, and the glossary. Either watch more videos or go ahead and start exploring on your own.